windswept hair, the dreamy nights designed to share. What's up YouTube? Uh, this is going to be an editing breakdown video of the Yacht Week film that I just posted. I've actually split this into two halves, so the first half is all going to be in Premiere and I'm going to talk you through the timeline. And I'm also going to talk a lot about sound design, uh, because I think the sound in this film is super, super important. And I'm going to tell you some of the tricks and tips that I've used. And then the second part is all going to be in After Effects. So I'm going to tell you about the transitions, I'm going to talk about the graphics, uh, and I'm also going to break down some of the 360 stuff that I've done as well. Let's do this. Okay, so I've got the Premiere project loaded up here. You can see the timeline over here on the right. It's quite a busy timeline. There's a lot going on in the sound department. In the video sections, there's not that much that's very interesting. At the bottom on the first sort of couple of tracks, we've got the, the assembly of the edit. I do most of the color correction in Resolve. Um, so in the middle layers here, what you've got is the kind of rendered output from Resolve. And maybe I'll do a video on color correction at some point, but uh, that's not really what I wanted to talk about in this video. Something else that might be quite interesting is when I make this stuff for Instagram, uh, I'll normally create the thumbnail image in Photoshop and I'll sort of test it out or I'll ask the client or whoever it is what thumbnail image they want to use for the project. And then once you've got that agreed, I usually just export it as a JPEG or as a PSD and I'll put it at the very, very beginning of the edit. So you can see that's what this is up here. It's just one single frame. So it means when you upload it to Instagram, you get this automatically as the thumbnail image and you don't have to scrub through and find the image that you want to use. So let's take a look at some of the audio stuff that we've got going on here. And I think this is probably more interesting to talk about. I mean, the first thing to notice is there's a lot. There's a lot of layers. So we've got like 27 layers or so. A couple of them are voiceover with a bit of processing. So this is the sort of processed voiceover layer and these are the original raw voiceover snips that we've got here. We've got music, that's this layer here. I'll play that for you. And then everything else in between is sound design and sound effects. So I'm just gonna turn off the voiceover and turn off the music and I'm just gonna show you how full and thick this is with sound effects. So let's mute the voiceover. Just play it from the beginning. Let's skip a bit further forward. Let's go to this section here. So that's enough of that. Um, but as you can hear, like there's a lot going on. It's really busy. And I think like my main kind of tip for doing any of this kind of stuff secret sauce or whatever you want to call it is just don't be lazy when it comes to sound effects and sound design honestly if your timeline doesn't look like this and it isn't this busy then you could have done more and you could have made it better it's just about thickening up the layers and just going deep into these sound effects libraries and finding the stuff that's right for your production ultimately there's not much more to it than just dropping a lot of sound effects into a timeline and seeing how they play with each other and then you know adding more taking them away and bringing some of them up and bringing some of them down so let's have a little look at the section where we go underwater. And I think this is probably one of the nicest bits of sound design that I've done. So let's just turn back on the music and we'll turn back on the voiceover as well. No more regrets. Dive in, get wet. So yeah, the music comes and goes and we sort of go underwater and we have got this kind of like immersive underwater feeling for a little bit of it. I'm gonna play you kind of all the individual sound effects that I've used to, to make this work. So this top layer here, let's just solo that. So you've got this kind of cool submerged underwater texture. The next one, we've got this impact hit. Let's listen to that. Nice deep bassy hit going on there. Next one, oh, classic bass drop, can't go wrong with this. Just adding loads and loads of extra depth and texture to that kind of bottom end of the frequency spectrum. Kind of subtle, but um, it's definitely there. This is a good one. Epic riser, fast whoosh. This is gonna give us loads of kind of energy and excitement as we go into this section. Yeah, I think that whoosh works really well for the hand coming across the screen there. Jet riser, so this is us coming sort of back out again, uh, sort of emerging out of the water. Uh, piano stab, this is like a sort of sharp impact noise. 
And then I think on these layers here, we've got uh, the camera clicks. Next layer is submarine. This is a nice little submarine sound effect that I found that I just thought would work pretty well. Just a fun little kind of submarine. Anyway, so you can see that there's a lot of layers of stuff, right? So let me just turn off the music and I'll turn off the voiceover and you can hear all of these different sound effects play together. So the soundscape of this moment is really just a combination of all these different effects put together. But there is one other kind of critical thing that I'm going to talk about, and that is how I made it feel kind of underwater. And this is something that I use a huge amount. And if you're going to pay any attention to anything, it should be this, because this is going to totally level up all of your sound design um, and any kind of audio production stuff that you do, because this is just a really, really, really useful effect. Basically, on, in the music here, what I've done is I've applied an effect called low pass. You can see it here. So you'd find that if you went into the effects panel and you typed in low pass, and what the low pass filter does is it basically sets this kind of cutoff value in the middle here. And it says that anything greater than 198 hertz, I'm not going to let pass. Anything lower than that is fine. And you can listen to that. Anything higher than that, no, we're going to cut that out. And the thing about the way that sound travels through water or through any kind of space is that the lower frequencies will always travel further. So that's why if you, you know, if you come to like a rave or a disco or something and you can hear the kind of bass pumping through the ceiling before you get to hear the treble or you're at a festival, you hear the bass in the distance that's because the low frequencies will always travel further. It's the same underwater. So underwater, you hear these low frequencies, but you're not going to hear these high frequencies. And that's why we need to use this low pass filter to create that kind of underwater feeling. So let's just solo the music and you'll be able to hear what, what's actually going on with this low pass filter. If I turn off the low pass filter, you can hear the music. So it just sounds totally normal. Turn it back on again and you hear that one more time. So what I've actually done is I've just keyframed this cutoff value. So I've said at the very beginning, uh, when we sort of entering this sequence, we're at 15,000 hertz, 15 kilohertz. It's letting the high frequencies and the low frequencies through. And that's pretty much the top of the human hearing range. And then when we go underwater, I've jumped in and I put a keyframe at 1,000 hertz. So that's really blocking out a lot of the high-end frequencies. And it's only letting the lower frequencies, the, the, the really deep bass through. And then as we go deeper... I've set another keyframe, which is 100 hertz, and it basically just blocks out even more of those higher frequency sound waves, and it makes us feel like we're going deeper and deeper into the water. And then when we come out again, just done the same thing in reverse. So I've got a keyframe here at 200 hertz, very, very deep down in the water. And then as we emerge back up above the water, we've got a keyframe at 15,000 hertz again. Play that for you again. <laughs> And actually, if you just listen to this sort of coming out of the water section here. What I've done is called filter sweeping. And we're basically sweeping from a 200 hertz cutoff, which is really, really low down the bottom end of the audio spectrum, up again to 15 kilohertz. So we're basically saying, you know, go through that whole audio spectrum range and you get this kind of really cool, really dynamic kind of whoosh effect. And it feels like you're going from far away to, to up really close. <laughs> So that whole kind of underwater sequence is basically created using the low pass filter. So there's lots and lots of different layers of sound effects. And then the low pass filter is the thing that, that really makes it feel immersive and it makes it feel like we're going underwater. And I've actually thrown a low pass on a couple of these other effects as well. And again, I've kind of keyframed the cutoff so it starts only letting really, really low frequencies through. And then as we kind of rise up through the water, it starts to let some of the higher frequencies through as well. And then that's about it when it comes to sound design. Um, for the rest of the edit, I've done pretty much the same thing. You know, I use the low pass quite a lot. Sometimes I add a bit of reverb just to add some echo. But you don't really need to do that because you can usually find sound effects that have echo or that have a bit of reverb already in them that people have kind of mixed and created with a different space in mind. So I would just recommend buying a couple of decent sound effects libraries, spending a bit of money on it. You can build up your own library of sound effects and things that you use all the time. Put some time and put some effort into your sound design. Make sure there's lots and lots of different layers. Make sure you're doing kind of distant ambience. So for example, this layer here, we've got beach. This is just a beach sound effect that's sitting underneath everything and it makes us feel like we're kind of on a beach. So it's nothing specific, but it just gives up that kind of distant 
beachy feel, um, which is what we wanted. This one here, this is this is just wind. So we've just got background wind sitting there underneath everything to make it feel like you know we're outside and we're really on this kind of mountaintop environment. So it's just about the layers. It's just about building up all these different layers and combining all the different elements to create the atmosphere that you want. So that is it for the first part of this tutorial. Definitely stick around for part two because I'm going to take you deep down inside the After Effects project and tell you about all the stuff that I've done in there.